It is December 18th, yeah, and it's episode 14 of Correct Opinions. Wow, killed that. Uh, welcome back, people. Thanks for listening. Today we uh, talk a little bit about Uber drivers, um, why I've officially made it. Um, I've got a little more story time with Trey, and uh, Merry Christmas, people. This is Correct Opinions. Roll music. Correct Opinions. Correct opinions. Woo! Man, is there any more extra of an intro song? I don't think so. Because here on Correct Opinions, we do it big. We do it. We do it. I was going to say best, but we, I feel like we do a pretty good job. We're getting better. But we do it big. <laughs> uh, welcome back, people. Episode 14. Having a good time. And, I'm, and your boy's struggling. Getting towards the end of the year, man. <sighs> I'm struggling to want to do anything. I uh, I feel like, I don't know if, I feel like this year more than ever f- to me, I don't know if anyone else, like, I just can't, I'm just like, I'm just kind of done for the year. I don't know. It feels like more and more every year, everyone between like Thanksgiving and the end of the year is like, yeah, I'm just done with this one. I'm done with this year. So, just kind of, I mean, people are hardly, I'm hardly getting emails, anything, man. I'm already getting emails like, hey, just FYI, uh, the office is closed for the next, like, 22 days. It's like, what? How does... Everyone's just done. Everyone's just done, dude. Oh, speaking of this, I saw this hilarious uh, Instagram video. Let me pull it up. It just came to my mind. This dude, uh, it's one of the Schwartz, Schwartz and Schwartz and Nagers. So, just give me 10 minutes to f- spell the last name to pull it up. i listen to this. This is going to get you fired up. This is going to get you fired up. Because he, he, this dude, Patrick Schwarzenegger, that's the one. He posted a video that just got me just mm, fired up. I was thinking like, man, I'm done for the year until I watch this. Listen to this. Okay, of course. Dude. Wi-Fi is so annoying. Of course it doesn't work. Do, do you guys want to talk about I have a... I have a, what's it, why can't I think of Google, Google Wire, what's it called? Google, holy crap, Google, I feel like oh, you're listening, yelling it at me. I have Google, Google Wi-Fi, Google, Google, Google Plug, Google Nest, no, Google, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, what is it? All right, in five, four, three, two, one, I'm going to figure it out. But the Patrick Schwarzenegger Google Fiber, holy crap. I was going to say, like, it doesn't work. My brain doesn't work. But it. I feel like those those companies that are so big, you're just like, hey, Google, like, it. my Wi-Fi works sometimes, but then it doesn't. They're like, yeah. Oh, the buddy of mine, Aaron Weber, has a funny bit where he's like, so I pay for a thousand megabytes a second, right? But if I were to test my Wi-Fi right now, it'd be like 220 megabytes a second. That's clearly, I'm paying for a thousand. And then you call them and they're just like, yeah, sometimes it's just lower. Sometimes it's less. Sometimes it's more. What? How, how are you allowed to do that? <sighs> yeah, he jokes like, Aaron jokes, if I went to the donut store and said, can I get a dozen donuts? And they give you three. You'd be like, I bought a dozen. Like, ah, well, sometimes it's just, <sighs> that's frustrating. Anyways, I'm, I'm thinking about the end of the year. I'm struggling until I listen to this video. I hope it doesn't have a bad word. We'll bleep it in the edit. Because this is a family-friendly podcast. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Uh, hey, what's going on, everybody? Patrick Schwarzenegger. Uh, today I want to talk to you separation guys about season, separation dude. season. Why? And why December ought to be your favorite month. Uh, first off, let me give you a little bit of background and context. Uh... You know, the past few weeks, I've been trying to make this meeting right, happen, we get a it. big business meeting, it's and with it's with a group my of dad, people, and we've been going because back- he's really rich and famous. Back and forth and back and forth, and, and finally, they just replied to me and said, hey, you know what? Let's push it 
till uh, middle of January. Makes sense. Makes sense. Let's push it till after the holidays. It's, Makes sense. It's way easier for everyone. It's more clear and and um, and plus, no one really does deals in December. It's kind of a, an off month. And I thought these people are trying to push it to the middle of January. Who does that? And then what? later that week, the same thing happened. Someone tried to push another meeting till after the holidays. Uh, so I had this uh, meeting with uh, my mentor, Ed Milet, a mentor. great guy. And, and um, I was telling him about this and he looked at me and he said, he smiled and he said, hey brother, this is separation season. December's my favorite month and I'm gonna tell you why. This is the month okay. that we separate Just, ourselves dude, from the others. Grab a candy cane you see, everyone, take a nap. All right, chill. What is it? Uh, what does that even? People, number one, he said, a big meeting. Gonna set up this big meeting. You guys, I knew this guy in college who'd be like, yeah, man, I can come hang after this meeting. I'm like, man, this guy's like, what is this guy doing? He's all these meetings. He was like, I'm in college. I've I've never had a meeting in my life. I've had a, I guess, a me- more of a beating. That the, like my parents would be like, we're gonna have a family meeting, and I just get a beating, a, a spanking, a one within reason anyways this guy's like i mean i knew this guy in college was like yeah i'll come by after a meeting and you found out he just like met two people at a coffee shop and they like did a school project like that's not a meeting okay come on people loved oh people love to say they have these meetings 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 it's like okay you you're just having lunch with someone that guy yeah you guys both have blogs but you're just friends eating lunch got a meeting at two separation season i love december that's other people i love mondays you hate them i love them it's like okay well i hate mondays and now you too december i don't want to do anything and now i don't want to hang out with you because you'd just be like this is the, the separation season what does that mean you just he made this video now instead of in january i don't really get it but anyway hope that fired up some of you but with all that being said I'm still making podcasts, people. I don't know if you figure this out, but a week from today is Christmas, a Wednesday. A week from then is New Year's Day. But my podcast will still be coming out, baby boy, baby girl. Yeah. So, I'm, yeah, the next two weeks, we still got my podcast dropping on Wednesday. So, yeah, Christmas morning. Well, it's Christmas Eve night. You're excited. You're going to get to bed early. Santa's coming. You can hardly sleep. You're so excited. Ho, ho, ho. Is that Santa? And then you wake up. And what's the first thing you're going to do? Listen to my podcast. Your family will be downstairs. Where's little, where's little, I don't know, like little kids listening to this? Or where's our grown child? I'll be down in a second, mom. The, the, what? It's Christmas. It's family. Well, I'm listening to Correct Opinions. What is that? <laughs> it's only the best podcast in the world, mom. At least, at least in the top fifty of the comedy section. So, ugh, that's what uh, that's really what the podcast is trying to do. You know, you need to. I just hope the next two holidays that happen to fall on Wednesdays, you neglect your family and listen to my podcast. That's that's my Christmas wish. So don't let that go astray. <laughs> but I'm I'm kidding. But if you have to work in between the holidays, you know, pop on the podcast. Hey, hey, we're still coming at you. I. Right? Hey. Ooh, that's how I know I made it. If you if you neglect your family for my podcast, or actually, you know how I know I made it. I just got this. I got this email list recently, and this is how you know you made it, people. Okay, listen to this. I got a fan reach out. It it says, "Hey Trey, I've been a fan for a while. This message. This is now how I know I've finally made it. I've been making videos for years. Here's the proof. Listen, hey man." Been a fan for a while. Love your funny content. It's got me through lots of depression. Now that, I love getting messages like that. Seriously, because that's that's real, and I'm happy I can bring a little joy anywhere it, it um, is needed. But wait, it gets much better. I wanted, you, I wanted to ask you this question. Please forgive me for being weird, and if you aren't comfortable, I completely understand. I was going to ask if I could pay to see pics of your bare feet. I'm serious. I have Cash App, Venmo, PayPal. Let me know. Love you, man. Love you, man. Let me see those little piggies. Hey, Trey. In my darkest of times, your videos really helped. And now let me see those piggies go to market, baby. This little piggy went to market. This little piggy is willing to pay you cold hard cash to see those phalanges. 
No, thank you. But I have to be honest, the first thing that came to mind when I got this, you know what it was? Well, that wouldn't be too difficult for me to do. I'm... <laughs> I must resp- I, th- I thought for the podcast bit, I'd be, it'd be funny to respond and have a conversation. But deep down, I was just like, well, let's see what his price is. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. But, I mean, what's the worst that could happen? Influencer Trey Quinity's arches of his feet. For Okay, I'm not. Anyways, I feel like when people are asking for feet pics... You've made a next level, dude. So look out for your boy. I'm a star in Hollywood. At least my feet might be. I mean, my feet, bro. The thing's crusty, bro. I got I, I got those finger toes, man. You know what I mean? Them things. My middle toe's bigger, longer than my pinky finger. Ugh. So picture, yeah. Ugh. I mean, this this is a fan, though. He might be listening. He or she might be listening. It actually doesn't say really who it is, but uh, I'm not going to say. But yeah, man, I'm not I'm not going to do it. Okay, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> Unless it's for $1,000. I'm not. I'm not. I'm kidding. <laughs> you know me. I just like to mess around. Oh, uh, let's, let's move it on. I am. Um, okay, this is great. You guys remember Anissa and Antonio from last episode? I think it's pronounced Anissa. I was saying it wrong. From last episode, the Christmas, the years of Christmas cards we got sent in of the family bragging about their kids. If you remember, these kids are like going to Stanford and curing diseases and stuff. Oppressive bunch. And I have a listener who has dug up Anissa's, a video from Anissa, a local news video from Anissa, which <laughs> that's an amazing work, listener. Shout out to you. Uh, you know who you are. I won't name names, but... I just want to watch this little local YouTube video. It's a couple minute news video about how Anissa has created an app. These kids created an app. These kids are amazing. At what age? Anissa's making apps at 17, it says. Dude, at 17, I was taking naps, but let's listen. Pair for the new year. You may be looking to better your health, or maybe you want to get a little bit better at your finances. All those are usually pretty popular. The New Year's resolutions yeah. that everyone has, everyone tries to stick to. But hey, turns out there's an app to help you actually stick to it. ABC 15's Jamie Warren shows the Valley teenager who actually made it all possible. Anissa! Anissa. There she is. Dude, I'm a singing mood today. I'm a chill. Anissa made an app, dude. What is it? typical 17 year old. I feel like there's a stereotype about teenagers um, that we're kind of just lazy and we kind of just sit at home and watch uh, Netflix. Uh, um, this junior at Basis I kind of feel there's a stereotype about teenagers that we're all <laughs> that we're lazy and just lay around. That that's not a stereotype. Anisa. That's yeah, that's every teenager. But you, you are making apps. Dude, at 17, I She's creating apps. At 17, the only thing I was creating was my mother's frustration. The only thing I was creating was my dad's headache. That's it. That's it. I didn't make anything else. I just, I don't get why teenagers get such a bad rap of just being like lazy and laying around. That's all of the teenagers. (laughs) I mean, I get the, I accomplished like becoming a 55 gold cross in Call of Duty 4. I was pretty proud of that. Oh my gosh. Charter school set out to make a difference. I found out that there's a huge need at Hope Women's Center um, for female hygiene products. For female hygiene Ferris products. Started there, she, she's hosting a table here that says tampon a thon. Creative. Another, she says 17. Dude, when I was 17, I didn't even know what a tampon did or what any of that was. Man, I was so clueless. I remember being like 15 and passionately arguing with a student about what sex actually was. I thought it was just um, like, I thought it was like a makeout scene in TV shows. My parents were just like, yeah, that's what sex is. You know, they're like, oh, we'll talk about it later. And I just, I just thought that till I was like probably 16. I don't know. I remember doing that. This kid was like, no, this is how it actually works. And I was like, you're so stupid, dude. <laughs> it's just 
when you kiss with a really open mouth. <laughs> You're clearly not been told, you know, that I would, I would argue like that about it. I remember arguing passionately that babies come out of the, the booty. Dead serious. When I was like 14, dude, way too, way older. Like someone should have informed me. I remember a kid being like, no, a baby comes out of, you know, I was like, <laughs> oh, all right. Yeah. All right. Like, how would that even work? It comes out of the booty, dude. It comes out of the bottom. I think I was, yeah, that's what I said at that age. Uh, yeah, right, man. Like, how would that even work? It clearly comes out at the bottom. I would, I was arguing with kids at school about that. <laughs> you think I'm going to make an app? I don't even know how to make a baby. I was very uninformed on a lot of things. I could, I could, uh, really do work in team deathmatch on the video game, but. Oh, this, I, this girl is, yeah, much more advanced than I was. Props to her. Nation drive. I, I remember the, and in the return, film that you watched. It was on my birthday in school. The film that just, I mean, vivid memories. Vivid memories. When they just described to us everything. I remember trying to be like a funny kid and being like, um, yeah. She'd be like, any questions? I'm like, yeah. Trying to be funny, thinking they'd be like, oh, okay, stop it. I was like, <laughs> what's breastfeeding <laughs> and then they're like well this is exactly how it works and they described it in detail i was like ah, stop it, stop it. i learned way i learned i aged eight years that birthday <sighs> i just didn't uh, this anisa's leap years ahead of me she's 17 and more mature than me right now could help even more people. She's trying to help people. That's when she saved up her money. Help people? I wouldn't even revive my buddy in the video game. Jeez. Money began researching and eventually designed okay, also, and why, launched Well Nexus. Why do the news people talk like that? Anyone ever notice that? An app for your phone connecting women and men with resources for their health and well being in an easy way. On Google, there's a lot of information, but I think that's what makes it even more confusing. For example, if you need help with okay, your finances, with just click on the tab. Anne Hathaway it here. For example, if you want some help, click on a tab. I'm genuinely curious. Does that does like is that just become like a thing that if you're a news anchor, you just know to talk like that? Do they teach you that? Is there a news anchor school where you learn to talk like this? Hi. We invest. We have looked into a local teenager saving lives, but this is a good story. You know, this is probably morning news. The goods, the meat of the stuff, and they talk like this, describing the most horrific things. Tonight at eight, seventeen babies found in a trash can. More details at eight. I don't want any more details on that. Oh my gosh! Tonight at nine. A rogue grandma shoots her entire family tree. More tonight on KSO TV. Uffy. What? That's horrifying. Why are you saying it like you're a little too peppy when you're delivering this news? Tonight at 9 p.m. prime time on KSO TV time. Nine. A local middle school basketball team mauled by a herd of pit bulls all the details you need here i don't need any of them this is horrible it then brings you to a link for a credit calculator food banks and an article about how to save money wow. there are also resources for keeping amazing. your mind body emotional and spiritual wellness in check in today's age, we have a lot of different mental Anissa's, illnesses that we need to bring when attention Anissa's to. When Anissa's president, and I think in like 20, 30 years, we're going to remember incorrect opinions. The attention they deserve. Ferris hopes this app not only helps people, but shows teens have the power to put their skills to good use. Teenagers mm. are the next generation. And a lot of us, I know a lot of my friends, like we want to help. Jamie Warren, ABC 15, Arizona. And, yeah. I can't wait. I hope there's another Christmas card and we can get an update. Anissa created an app. It's like on my Christmas card this year, my mom's like, Trey continues his uh, um, work as uh, making 
F- funny videos online, you know. Our daughter created an app and is going to Stanford. It's just, it's different. It's fine. Our son it continues to grow um, his his social media following and while making ends meet, sending photos of his um, f- flippers. We're so proud of him. Yeah. Anise is creating apps. Trey is, I guess, taking naps and... <laughs> <laughs> Woo, man. Shout out Anissa. I hope we get more updates. Uh, dude, like in the, when I was that age, I remember there's a little more story time with Trey. Story time with Trey. Um, I, she was, she's creating apps. I was creating problems for my parents, right? That's what I said. I, I wasn't a week into being 16. I got my car. It was a copper colored Xterra. Don't mean to brag. Um, yikes. And I, five days after my license, I, I floored it in reverse into the side of my parents' house. I mean, it came into the house. Like, some out of, like, a, what was it, Family Matters? When they just drove right in the kitchen? It was pretty close to that. But in reverse, I was. Back, I remember in uh, them teaching us how to drive. They'd be like, always remember two hands on the wheel. And I remember, gosh, teenagers are the worst. I remember being like, thinking I was really cool. I was like, I only need to drive with one hand. And I'd purposely, like when I was, you know, learning, I'd just go one hand. My parents would be like, can you, that, Trey, Trey, two hands. I don't need two hands. Mom, I can drive better than you. I literally would say stuff like that. And then I nearly ran her over when she was cooking dinner so i was wrong obviously and i not really it was actually not that dangerous but i i just gas it back so my driveway was kind of like a back it up then go down forward back it up i'm like yeah whipping it one one uh, hand floor it back and i was going to hit the brakes and then go forward but i just took my foot off and just hit the gas again and just smacked the brick wall into the house Uh, my parents came out they were in shocked as I was. I was like, Oh my gosh, Oh my gosh, Oh my gosh, Oh my gosh. It's truly, I don't, I mean, I know probably a lot of people have suffered like actual really scary, tragic moments that I can't imagine, but, uh, that's the, that's the only moment in my life where I don't know if, if any of you have experienced that moment of truly like entering like a dream state. You're like, is this real? At, At the age of 16, that felt like the whole world was crashing down, but just bashing in the house. I was like, this can't be real. This can't be happening. This can't be happening. And my parents run out. My mom was like, oh, what are you doing? Yeah, she was, n- <laughs> but my dad was very calm. Well, first he got in and put the car in park. I, I just, the car was still in reverse and I just got out. You know, I didn't know what I was doing. It's really ridiculous that we have 16 year olds driving on these streets. But, uh, my dad, he says, well, uh, this, well, I guess you'll pay for this. You know, you might want to pick up some extra shifts. So, yeah, what what in that video? Anissa said she paid for the app with her own money. Well, I invested in real estate when I was sixteen. Anissa, how about that? Did I destroy said real estate and really have no choice? Yeah, but I owned part of the house when I was sixteen. Not a lot of kids can say that. Not a lot of kids can say that. So, oh, speaking of reversing, I was just. I just came from the gym, not to brag. And uh, there's this huge truck. It, it took me like five minutes to exit the parking lot because this massive truck was taking his time backing into a space. G- all you guys in huge trucks, why park it in forward and then reverse it after? What? That's what all of us are doing. What's the What's the pros of that? It is so annoying to watch a guy back into a space everyone's everyone's doing the other thing just do what everyone's you're making you're in you're, you're making the system so inefficient when we're like quick pull in and then you back up out so when i'm trying to like do that you're doing the opposite it's just causing causing me mad making me mad mad it's we shouldn't be backing up into spots we shouldn't be backing up into things the only place we should be backing it up is in the club, okay? Ain't that right? 
we don't back in the parking spots. We back it up in the club. Correct opinions. Uh, slay, sane. Just write that down. Man, I don't. I don't do well at clubs. I can tell you that. Before I give you some club stories, uh, we have some sponsors. This episode is sponsored by Theragun. Thank you so much, Theragun, for sponsoring and also sponsoring my muscle soreness, as in removing it. Because Theragun is an easy-to-use handheld device that helps to relieve tension and increase blood flow. Uh, Whether you're an athlete, mom, business professional, fitness enthusiast, or person who experiences pain, (laughs) each Theragun provides a natural approach to improving your physical health and wellness. I have one. I use it all the time. I'm being serious. I'm being dead serious. I really, I really enjoy it. Um, has tons of uses from activating muscles to preventing cramping to treating soreness. Like I said, I just came from the gym, so I treat soreness a lot because I'm getting huge. And I have an offer for my listeners. Thank you, Theragun, for uh, hooking up my listeners. Y'all go to theragun.com slash opinions, and you'll get two free attachments with purchase. That's right, two free attachments, which is a $40 savings. Go to theragun.com slash opinions. Hey, you got a dollar? You need to shave? Then join the club. That's right. Dollar Shave Club is sponsoring today's episode. And uh, I love it. I use Dollar Shave Club. I keep it, uh, keep the keep the trim tight. I actually do for a shave, but um, I can't speak enough about the quality of the products. Not only are they affordable, they're, um, they're high quality. And they got you covered head to toe. They have everything you need to shower, shave, style your hair, brush your teeth, and even wipe your behind. That's right. And right now, you can put the quality of Dollar Shave Club's products to the test. Their ultimate shave starter set has basically everything you need for an amazing shave. The, the executive razor, shave butter, prep scrub, and post shave do. The best part is you can try it for $5. After that, the restock box ships regular sized products at regular prices. Get your ultimate starter set for just $5 when you go to dollarshaveclub.com slash tray. So get that $5 set. Only when you go to dollarshaveclub.com slash tray. Thank you. And this episode of Correct Opinions is also brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of amazing classes covering dozens of creative and entrepreneurial skills. I took one on the editing part because you boys, you know, I'm trying to up my editing game, you know. (laughs) And um, yeah, it's amazing. You guys, you know, I hope you know I like learning. I hope you guys like learning. If you want to start some kind of fun side project or hobby, Skillshare has a class for you. And I would have an offer for you guys. You can get two months of Skillshare for free. Two months of uh, joining the millions of students already learning on Skillshare. Um, You get unlimited access to thousands of classes for free for two months. When you go sign up at Skillshare.com slash Trey, go to Skillshare.com slash Trey to start your two months now. That's Skillshare.com slash Trey. I remember going to uh, my first club was South Padre Island in Texas, dude. Well, it was senior trip. Hey, so it was like a like an 18 and older club so i think i don't know if they serve drinks i don't know we just like we're sipping virgin cocktails and like walking around wishing we knew how to talk to any kind of girls i remember i they have like that one friend who like had no you know had all the courage and i went i witnessed him go up to a group of girls and try to say something i was like don't do don't do it dude don't do it dude don't do it and the girls claimed to be uh lesbian to which later that night they were clearly seen chatting with and flirting with several other guys. So, you know, I, yeah, it was, it was more of a guy's trip, more of a guy's trip. Uh, um, I just don't, I, I was at a, it's been weird. Cause I'm, I'm just not, I don't know how the club scene works or like the bar scene. And it's been weird to, I've been a few places before, like Scottsdale has a, I had no idea has like a Vegas level scene. And I was out with some friends and like, the people like the security and people working there recognize me and like some people. So I like got up in like the fancy table area and there's even a couple NBA players there who knew who I was and they were like, what's up man. And I remember just sitting there like, dude, I am this. Yeah. The, the, I remember when the NBA, NBA guys goes, welcome to my world. I'm like, I'm usually in, you know, JJ Tolkien's world, you know, I'm up, I'm in my bed reading a book at this hour. I am, uh, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do with, and I remember just kind of being like, man, I'm getting tired and I just don't have it, man. I don't have it in me at all. I, uh, (laughs) 
I went to a the only the only place I flourish is the karaoke bars. That's right. That's right. I'll just I'll just get up there and kill it, man. I don't care. I don't care at all. Like this guy's trying too hard. <laughs> Am I? This is effortless. <laughs> What's up? Yeah, carry everyone's like, "What is dude? What this is supposed to be fun." Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> I'm up here killing it, dude. Like I'm on American Idol. Yeah, I don't do all the clubs. I I, I remember. Um, shout out Jay Sean. Y'all remember him? Baby, are you down, 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 down? Jay Sean, uh, that's my boy. He he's actually followed me for years, and he hit me up. He was in uh, my city. Like we have a. Sh he's like, oh, come through. Like bring some friends. You can like come up on stage. The whole thing. He was like DJ in a club, and I just. So what's my instinct? I just text five of my do my bros. And we like meet him beforehand for drinks. And he, I remember we walked in. I think he was, you know, I don't think that's typical behavior for him in this setting. But he's like, wow, just he's like, guys night, huh? I'm like, yeah, yeah I don't. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I didn't even occur to me to try to. This is it for me, man. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine? Oh, yeah. Trey, he has, he's like all these followers. He seems like a cool guy. Come through the concert. Yeah, this is me, uh, Chris, Danny and Josh. What's up, man? He's like, oh, okay, well, c cool. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what. Sorry, dude. Is what it is. I uh, I went out recently. Somewhere, you know, gotten Ubers. Uber Uber is not only very helpful to get around and, but very entertaining. The type of people, I mean, all sorts of people driving those Ubers, man. It's amazing. I uh, I remember I'll never forget this Uber I have took one night. It was like a it was like a Friday night, so I'm Ubering to like a party or something. You know the vibe the vibes are not the vibes are right. I'm feeling good. It's the weekend. Hey, and this guy's like, "What's up, man? You know we're small talking. Well, yeah, what's you know what do you got going on? He's like, I don't know. Just yeah, been picking up Uber recently. Just trying to find something to do. Keep my mind off uh, you know, my wife taking all the kids. Uh, uh. Oh, oh, okay. I I was just, can I have a piece of gum? Or, you know, before and I'm like, yeah, man, do, could, do you mind if I get the aux cord? I'm like blaring sicko mode. Sicko mode. Yeah, man, wife took the kids. Oh, okay. All right. And he just keeps going. Yep. I'm serious. This is real. Yep. Just uh, walked in on her in bed with my best friend. And uh, so that marriage was done. And, and now uh, we're in. We're fighting for the kids. She's off another state with them. So just trying to get, trying to keep busy. Keep my mind off it. Oh, my God. I mean, devastating news. Devastating. Oh. I mean, I, I just, I, I've never, I didn't recover that night. I've never recovered. I still remember it vividly. I was like, I'm so sorry, man. I didn't know what to say. Oh, it's just, it's so sad. You get some of those guys, dude. Oh, I can't imagine. And you, I always love the guys who are like, they're kind of like embarrassed Uber, but there's nothing to be embarrassed about at all. I've definitely thought about Ubering because it sounds like it'd be kind of fun. This The guys who are like, yeah, it's just, this is something I do just kind of like for fun because I'm bored. But like I, my main job, I make like six figures. Like, oh, okay. You wanna, my W2's in the glove box, dude. You, you want to no. <laughs> You know, those guys, they're like, no, that no, was just on the side. I like uh, have several businesses and a bunch of a big house. It's like, all right, that's fine. It's all good, man. I don't, it's all good. Or the people who, this is also, I feel like an older generation alike, but I had this Uber once in Houston. I remember this because the GPS, you know, the GPS these days, it's a satellite communicating and it's amazing, but they're able to like figure out that, you know, whatever route they're telling you is the most efficient route based off traffic and this and that. And I remember this guy, he's like, ah, those things are crazy, man. This, I know a shortcut. And it just doubled the time. Cause he ran right into like an accident or something. I'm like, dude, just please. Or you ever get an Uber and they're like, um, so where are we headed? Um, the address I entered. That's the whole point. That's, I mean, <laughs> so 
where are we going? You, that just follow those step by step directions. I don't surely you've done this before. It says in the app you have a good rating. You've completed a thousand trips. You know where are we hit? Okay, nah, that thing doesn't know what it's talking about. I know. I know a better way. Uh, that's that. That's Google. It knows. It literally knows everything. It literally can't be wrong. I think it doesn't know anything. I don't know a shortcut. I've been taking it for years. Doubles the time. Ah. And I, I've never have the heart to give anything but five stars. I don't. I've only given not five stars like once because the guy like nearly killed us or something. I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't do it. I mean, the guy, the guy didn't mean it, but it's like, come, just do the, just follow the directions, please. I did have, uh, I had another weird Uber experience because oftentimes I uh, most of my Ubers, I'm like alone because I'm traveling or for work or something. And so I just hop in the back and maybe chat for a bit and then take a call or listen to music, whatever, listen to my own podcast. Just kidding. Seriously. And <clears throat> oh, I don't do that. And I had this lady one time. Oh, I've had people before. This happens more in the Midwest. Cause people are really friendly. They're like, sit up front with me. Like, okay. But there's some times where you just really don't want to. Right. Or like you're like I actually need to be productive in the back here, so I'll be. I've done a few times. Where I'm like I'm sorry. I need to like, take a call back here. Like okay, I did that one time. Lady's like sit up here. I'm like I'm sorry, and I opened up the back door, and like an eight year old was just staring at me. Like I was like oh, yeah, I'll sit up front. That feels less weird than back here with your child. But respect. I'm almost grinding. Respect. Gave her a great, great review. Had a woman once get offer us homemade cookies. Um, lady, uh, actually ate one <laughs> in hindsight. It's like, uh, what? No, don't give me that's in a Tupperware and you're in control here. Eat this cookie, pass out, drive wherever. But I did eat one. It was good. But don't people don't eat a homemade cookie from an Uber driver. That's rule number one. I think <laughs> I had a lady once I was, it was like 12 degrees in the morning airport ride she's like sorry the heater's broken oh that's the only <laughs> well that happens everyone's nice i always get five stars unless you nearly kill me it's just <laughs> the kind of guy i am it's the kind of guy i am because they're doing their best they're driving us around they're driving us around Driving stinks. You ever done on long road trips? I finally i i put the put the pin in my road trip coffin. Last year for July Fourth, I drove to Mount Rushmore. Me and I didn't really have any plans. My two roomies, I was like, "Hey, none of us have been there. Let's go." Like a fifteen-hour drive. That'll be fun. Just we'll just really talk, have some live chats. Holy crap! That was horrible. We did see it. It was cool. But the drive back, dude, South Dakota, the drive through South Dakota, it is startling how little there is. Like it makes you, it made me start to panic. I'm like, where do I think we transported to another dimension? Where is everything? It is amazing how vast and vacant it is. Oh, it's like a Denny's these days. <laughs> I mean, it was unbelievable i uh it's beautiful but at some point it's like geez i, I started to think like w there was like hour gaps where there's nothing it's like if our car breaks down we're gonna die we are, are we're gonna die i don't know <laughs> that's where we're at i mean i my phone doesn't work out here to have a service that without if my phone if i'm out in the world out somewhere and my phone dies i die that's it's getting <laughs> that's where we're at in society if my phone dies out somewhere I die. If I literally go run errands, my phone dies, I might never make it home. I can't go anywhere. I can't make it anywhere. I've completely given up. I used to be like, because I, I when I started driving and kind of going places when GPS started coming around, I at least had that Garmin before like the phones really had it. So I just plug it in. I remember trying like, yeah, that street's there and that. And now, especially like 
uh, the my generation above us remember like my uncle or parents they're like asking directions i'm like i i have no idea i can just see they're so judgment the, the, like you've lived in the city for how many years and you don't No, i have no idea i gps everywhere it took me 62 visits to my gym to figure out how to get there by memory i'm serious <laughs> I, I can't make it anywhere it's scary yeah, we're uh, you know, I how often how often have you had this conversation? If you're around my age, when some uh the older generations like, you know, you know, we uh that place off there off uh 127th, you know, we go off there and you're just Yeah, yeah, that's right. And they're they're like, "Where's that? That's that's down there because that's what that generation used to do. That was like to talk directions. What? That's that down there uh just east off of Campbell, right? And how any time that's been said to me, hundred percent of the time, I don't know what you're talking about. And hundred percent of the time I go, yeah, yeah, that's the one. That's the one. Yeah. That, uh, that one down there, that's just, uh, what is that kind of about the corner of 130th and, uh, Richardson. Right. Uh, and I act like I think about it. Um, well, I think, yeah, 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 yeah. That's where it is. I don't know. I don't. And hundred percent of the time I'm making that up and I've started to just embrace it. And I just go, I, c- I have no idea. And I, I see the look on their face like, what? Yeah, man, that's, where, where's that? We're, we'll meet you there. It's, or, or when people, especially my, like, my parents will do that. And then they think it's rude when I do this. They go, yeah, let's meet there. Uh, and where is, how do we get there again? Where is it? Or they try to tell you, yeah, it's down there. I just go, I'll plug it in the phone. And I can tell they're like, that's kind of rude. I'm like, I, or people start talking. Yeah, where's that again? It's like, it's on our phone. It's in Google that knows everything. Like, I don't, school these days has to be tough. Why would you need to learn anything? I just Google it. Well, that's a little bit of a stretch, but we'll meet you there. It's just down off 127th. It's like, yeah, uh, I'll look on my phone. We're done. It's crazy. It is crazy. It's because, <laughs> oh, road trips. I took, I once drove from Oklahoma to Miami, Florida. Me and two friends. Um, to see Justin Timberlake in concert. Was it worth it? <laughs> I mean, no. Nothing's worth doing that. That was It was a 24-hour drive. We did it on the way back in one swing. Noon to noon. I got pulled over 23 and a half hours into the drive. We got a warning because I think it looked like we were... Probably looked like... I don't know. Like we were on stuff. Say, what's up? And I was like, where, where are you coming from? Miami, Florida. Holy crap. Why? Uh, to see Justin Timberlake. You're an idiot. How'd you get there? Which direction is it? I don't know. I, it's in the, I was following what that computer says. Turn left on. That's, I don't know. I fully, there's times I've been 30 minutes outside of my house and I said with, if my life depended on it, it would, I might be able to get back. Like I think it would take a really, really long time, but ugh, scary, honestly, how dependent we are on these things. Um, yeah, sheesh. I've used it before to like, like I'll go on a run and be like, I, oof, how do I get back? And I have to like GPS how to get back to my house on a run because I ran so far. That's not true. That's scary, man. Depending on these phones, but man, they're fun. So keep following me and watching my videos. Thanks so much. <laughs> um, ignore all I said. These things are great, but I uh, appreciate y'all watching. Thanks for giving me the the love. I, I noticed y'all, uh, Give me some good reviews on Apple. That means a lot. Um, and then if, yeah, if you ever want to watch, there's a video version of this on YouTube for those listening. And uh, you can listen anywhere. I don't know why I'm telling you this. But I appreciate y'all. Hope you have a great Christmas. Like I said, we'll, there will be an episode the next couple of weeks. So let, talk to your boy. And do less God bless. All right? Appreciate y'all. Much love. Peace. Correct opinion.